In this last segment, we're going to talk about two of the most important kinds of smart contracts that you'll see used in DeFi, which are fungible and non-fungible tokens. So we've already shown examples of cryptocurrency transactions that transfer the native underlying currency of uh, the blockchain, like Ether and Ethereum. And we've also been looking in this segment in smart contracts as a programming model where you can define program objects, including their data structures and their code methods. Well, so what's a token? A token is just a kind of smart contract where the choice of the data structures and methods are meant to provide the same kind of functionality that uh, the underlying digital asset does. Um, it provides methods to transfer quantities or units of your, in, of your digital asset. It allows you to check your balance, how much of the digital asset you own. Basically, it's a smart contract that behaves effectively like a digital asset. We're going to talk mainly about two different kinds of token contracts. There's fungible and non-fungible. We'll talk about non-fungible first. So we've already seen some examples of non-fungible uh, tokens. We've looked at CryptoKitties, and CryptoKitties are a good example of non-fungible tokens. Uh, what non-fungible token means is that you have a smart contract which defines an array of records, and each one of those records uh, describes a single individual digital asset. So here's a CryptoKitties smart contract. It'll have a list of all of these individual CryptoKitties tokens, and each one of them is just a, a memory cell in the CryptoKitties contract. So it's one contract that keeps track of all of the individual cats. And what makes these non-fungible is that each one of them has its own distinct identity and attributes and owner, and you, you interact by transferring or putting up for sale uh, one distinct cat at a time. You can't just add two cats together and you can't transfer a half of a cat. Um, they're all distinct and you know each one of them is tracked by the smart contract. Now, uh, what's useful about following a standard is that it means that you get some interoperability with tools that can work with this smart contract. Um, so the main uh, function of a non-fungible token is the transfer function, and one of the main events that it emits is a standardized transfer event. And what I'm showing you here is the view of Etherscan, which knows to look for the transfer event emitted by a smart contract, and whenever it sees it, it's able to interpret that this was an, uh, a non-fungible token that was transferred in this transaction. So it's able to generate this view for you of showing you all of the non-fungible tokens and it's sorting them in order of how many transfer events they've all had. And this is entirely automatic. If you created your own smart contract that had this standard, it could show up on this list uh, all automatically. Similarly, any wallet software that knows how to work with non-fungible tokens is going to know how to transfer or check the balance of your account for, for these standardized tokens. Now we're going to look at a simple code demo of a simple non-fungible token. This isn't exactly compliant with uh, the commonly used NFT standard, but it's pretty close and should give you the idea. So let's go through this. First of all, this defines a data type, a record struct, which is going to have one of these for each one of the digital assets tracked in this token contract. The main field that each one's going to have is a string description. This could be text describing the asset. It could be a URL that points to a JPEG or points to more information about the asset, um, anything really. And this will be fixed for the lifetime of the asset. Uh, we also have an address field pointing to the owner. And this isn't really necessary, but just as an example, I'll have a little flag that indicates whether this has been minted yet. Now, the main data uh, member in the contract is this table, this mapping, which is going to map IDs. They're just counter values, starting at zero and counting up. And those IDs are going to map to that record struct for each digital asset tracked by this contract. Um, this is going to have a, the way that new assets are created, this will initially be empty, but the way that you mint new assets will be using this mint method. 
I have this set so that only the administrator, the person who created this contract, is allowed to mint new assets here. And what it's going to do is take the next available ID and initialize it with the text description passed in as an argument. Uh, and that's all. The initial owner of it will be the administrator of the contract. Now, the standards uh, methods that are here are owner of, which when you give it an ID, it'll tell you who's the current owner of that asset. And then we also have transfer. And what transfer is going to do is you tell it which asset you want to transfer and who you want to send it to. It checks that you are actually the owner of that asset, so it's yours to transfer. And if so, it carries out the transfer. And if this were more of a complete standards compliant contract, uh, it would probably emit an event here so that tools like Etherscan could pick it up. Now, instead of non-fungible tokens, we can also talk about fungible tokens. So fungible tokens resemble dollars or they resemble Bitcoin and Ether, where there isn't really any meaning to each individual unit. It doesn't have its own distinct ID, each individual unit of the currency. Instead, you just treat it as a, a quantity, like I have eleven and a half dollars. If I have five more, now I have sixteen and a half dollars. You track the total amount, not each individual penny or each individual unit of the currency. So this is an illustration of what um, Etherscan can show you for a fungible token. It's showing you a pie chart of which account holders have how much of this token. So what you can see here is that this token, this is just a test token. It was created for, uh, for a course um, just used in a classroom. But what it's showing you is that there are a bunch of account holders, all who have roughly the same amount and then one user, probably the instructor, has the majority of all of the tokens. And again, this is just showing you a pie chart of the quantity that add up to 100%. Uh, it's not keeping track of the identities of each individual unit. So that's the difference between fungible and non-fungible. Now for the fungible standard, there are you know, a bunch of different other function methods that are defined in the standard. This is just a sample, um, but you could go look up ERC-20 to see more. Um, but some of these include checking the balance of a given owner address, checking how many total tokens are available in total, and of course transfer, where now you're not giving the idea of which item to transfer, like with an NFT, instead you're saying how much of the ERC-20 token are you going to transfer. There's quite many uh, additional methods besides just these that are defined in the standard. In particular, they have this notion of transfer from and an approval mechanism. And this is actually really important for how wallet smart contracts and other advanced functionality like uh, DEXs are able to work. Um, but we're not going to go into those more um, just for now. So to sum up, Tokens are just a kind of smart contract, but they're a smart contract that's designed to behave like a digital asset. And we talked about the difference between fungible and non-fungible tokens, where non-fungible it's defining a series of assets, each one of which has its own unique identifier and attributes. And we talked about fungible tokens, which are just treated as a quantity of some asset type, which can be summed up and um, sent in fractional parts. And the main idea of these uh, token standards is that they stick to some standardized interfaces. And the point of this is that it helps interoperability between different tools. In the Ethereum ecosystem, ERC-20 and ERC-721 are the most commonly used standards for non-fungible or fungible and non-fungible tokens, respectively. And they have a bunch more other features than that besides just transfer, but that's the main idea.